Hello fellow modelers, it's Bruce here. I wanted to do another update and uh, as promised in my last video, talk a little bit about creating the scene uh, for the Benger Sleet Company um, on this lower deck of my two deck layout. And the lower deck, if you'll recall and have been following along, is uh, represents a rebuild of the Jersey Highlands Railroad that I had built uh, back in New Jersey. Um, so let's just take a minute or two and talk about a little bit of uh, geography and terminology. Uh, Jersey Highlands. What are the Jersey Highlands? Well, when you travel up to the northwest corner of New Jersey, so, so if you're familiar with the area, western Bergen County, northern Passaic County, Sussex County, um, a bit of Warren County, those are what's considered to be the Jersey Highlands. You have rolling hills, what we in New Jersey call mountains, the Ramapo Mountains. Um, you know, mountains by eastern standards, not by uh, the Rocky Mountain standards. But, you know, the highest point in New Jersey up in the northwest corner is about uh, a high point is 1,800 and some feet. So, you know, decent when you look at them from, uh, from afar. Those are the Jersey Highlands. The Jersey Highlands was situated between the coal fields of Pennsylvania, the Scranton, uh, Carbondale area of, of Pennsylvania. So the Jersey Highlands were located between that coal-rich area and uh, New York City. And so it, that area of New Jersey became threaded with tracks from competing railroads that collectively are, are known as the anthracite roads because primarily their purpose in, in being developed was to move anthracite coal from the coal fields of Pennsylvania to New York City. So many familiar names of railroads, the Lackawanna, the Erie, the Reading, um, New York, Ontario, and Western, Lehigh and Hudson River, Lehigh and New England, the Susquehanna Railroad. Um, and um, probably, oh, the Jersey Central Railroad, uh, and I know I'm forgetting some others. So when I created my Jersey Highlands Railroad back in New Jersey, the home railroad, if you will, was the Susquehanna. And the reason that I chose the Susquehanna was I grew up in Oakland, New Jersey. Uh, the Susquehanna went right through the middle of town. Uh, after we got married, we moved to... Uh, West Milford, New Jersey, lived there for 40-some years. The Susquehanna went uh, right up through West Milford. So I was very familiar with it. Uh, it still exists in a new iteration. Uh, so like, unlike some of the other railroads that I mentioned uh, who are no longer in existence under the same name, although some of their trackage is still being used, the Susquehanna rails are still being used by a company whose locomotives are labeled Susquehanna. So I chose the Susquehanna, and then because, uh, like many modelers, I, I can't resist purchasing new locomotives when they come out, I uh, expanded it to include any railroad that interchanged with the Susquehanna. Well, boy, that was a lot of those uh, aforementioned railroads interchanged with the Susquehanna. So you will see motive power eventually for the Erie and the Lackawanna and the Jersey Central, New York, Ontario and Western, uh, Lehigh and New England, Lehigh and Hudson River, uh, etc. So that's the Jersey Highlands and uh, the concept of my Jersey Highlands Railroad. Now why is the Benger Slate seen here? Well, the Slate region of Pennsylvania is fairly small. It actually lies between northern New Jersey and the coal fields, and, uh, but much closer to the Delaware River. As a matter of fact, if you take Route 80 out through the Delaware Water Gap and you look a little bit to your left, you're looking at um, Bangor, Penn Argyll, um, and a number of other small towns that were the slate pit capital of the world at that time. The um, little town of Bangor, which does exist, is a lovely town. If you live within an hour of Bangor, 
uh, take a Saturday afternoon trip over there. Um, they have a lovely um, restaurant in the old Benger Hotel in their little main street, which is fairly small. And around the corner from that is a wonderful slate museum. I think it's only open on, uh, on Saturdays. At any rate, Benger does exist. Um, and it was and uh, just one of the biggest slate producing uh, areas around. It was served by the Lackawanna Railroad and the Lehigh and New England Railroad. The uh, nice thing about it is if you drive from Columbia, New Jersey by the Water Gap off of Route 80 down to Bangor, you pass some of the old slate pits and the slag heaps come right down to the road you're driving on. So if you pull off to the side, you can pick up a bunch of scrap slate uh, and break it up and I use it on my scenery and we'll do that again. So that's uh, Bangor that does exist. It was uh, very active in the slate area. Um, in northern New Jersey, because we were so close to that, so many structures still to this day have slate roofs, it's hard to believe. Uh, out here in Michigan, I come across a few slate roofs. Some of them are old. I found a nice one in Milford off the, not on Main Street, but a street back, kind of a big Victorian house with a slate roof. But in northern New Jersey, you'll find barns, sheds, um, many, many houses, of course, plus public structures, churches and schools and uh, so forth, all had slate roofs. I even found in Bangor itself an outhouse with a slate roof. So, um, yeah, if you live in an area where you can walk out to the slag heap and pick up thrown away slate, uh, you put it on your outhouse roof too. So that's kind of the uh, geographic and historic background a little bit. Um, but now what I want to do is take a look at the structures that I had built uh, from my, on my previous layout for the town of Bangor and the slate pit, and I'll bring you up to date as to where I am on that. Okay, be back shortly. Okay, let's uh, start by looking at some changes uh, that have taken place in the past week. Uh, on the lower deck, we'll focus. I'll come back and talk about each of these structures in a minute. But let's take a look at the slate pit itself. And again, this is uh, just a semblance of a small s uh, slate pit. Um, I've already painted the pink foam here, my choice of ground color. Uh, it was one that was recommended by Dave Frary in his scenery book. Um, and I used it back in New Jersey. I use it to mix my ground goop. It actually turns out uh, to look pretty good when you do finish scenery and put ground foam and so forth on it. This, it, it was a Sears, <laughs> a Sears paint. And out of all of uh, Frary's suggestions, I picked a Sears paint because I figured, you know, Sears is going to be around forever. So, uh, so much for that wisdom. But... Uh, it was the old number 600 in the Sears uh, paints. Uh, and I, what I did when I saw the handwriting on the wall before we moved for Sears, um, I put a little bit of the paint onto uh, a piece of cardboard and I brought it over to uh, Ace Hardware recently and they did their color match and made up a batch. I'll, I'll put the Ace Hardware mix if you want, but there's plenty of good earth colors. Now, if you look down in the slate pit, you see a variety of different textures. You see on the bottom wood, um, and there's uh, actually some masonite on the back there. There's foam, and I want to have a uniform uh, texture on all four sides, right from the bottom of the pit up. And so I'm going to line that uh, pit. Um, and I have about three different ideas right now I'm playing with. One of them is to uh, use the... Uh, styrofoam uh, packing sheets that go under meat in the meat counter in the grocery store. Uh, those are nice and thin and uh, you can etch lines on them and so forth and I figured I could glue them in there and uh, maybe etch some lines like I did back in New Jersey. Another thought is to use a foam core board which is fairly thin and then a final idea I had was to use uh, 
balsa foam, which I have some. If you haven't worked with it, that's good for etching. Here, let me get a piece of balsa foam a minute so you can see what it looks like. So that's a couple sheets of balsa foam, and uh, you can easily etch lines on it, paint it, and so forth. It might be a little bit thicker than I wanted, but I think it won't take up too much room. Uh, so we'll see. I'll use one of those to line it and then paint it slate gray. I uh, already put some slate gray down in the bottom there just to test out a color. So I'll be working on the pit. All right, now let's look at the uh, structures. Uh, let's start with the company store here. Now all of these were really made as background buildings, or many of them were, because uh, back in New Jersey I had about the same depth as you see here for my whole scene of uh, the Bangor area. So I drew a sketch of what I wanted the company store to look like, and then I uh, made it out of uh, wood, a little bit of styrene here and there, the roof on the uh, porch is styrene, as is are the, are the columns and the fancy work. Everything else is uh, wood except for the windows. Uh, again, I put a slate roof on it, and uh, because we're in the slate area of Pennsylvania. And then there's the ever-present uh, checker game going on on the, uh, on the porch. Now, you know, I packed everything up, took all the structures off of my old layout and packed them up and uh, transported them out here. I didn't let the movers do it, but still some things got damaged. There's a uh, missing uh, one of the brick pillars right here in this corner. You can see the other ones here, here, here. Now, I still have some of this uh, brick material that I could use, and if I, it might take me two days searching through boxes to find it, so I might just put a piece of uh, wood there, paint it brick color, and hide it a little bit with some uh, shrubberies. Um, so, yeah, that's the company store, background building. The um, aging, the patina here, the verdigris, if you will, on the... Uh, copper roofing there. I did do a uh, YouTube video on that. So if you look through my videos, it's one of the more popular ones on how do you add verdigris to uh, you know, styrene, basically. Next up are three company houses um, that were grant line uh, houses made out of styrene. I chopped them down to make them shorter because I, again, had uh, limited depth there. So I had three company houses. I had a um, freight house for Bangor Slate. Um, this is a kit. Uh, I think it's Glorcraft kit. The original was um, much larger than that, much longer. And again, for space reasons, I cut it down so it didn't dominate uh, the scene. Um, so that's the freight house, again with a slate roof. And the office for the Bengal Slate Company is a Campbell kit. It's the uh, Columbia Gazette office, which was by Campbell supposed to be a, a newspaper office. Um, again, a little bit of damage. The top part of this had uh, been broken off and uh, I just glued it back on and coming back here the steps had been broken off, and I glued that back on. Okay, the last part of the scene was a scratch-built derrick, which uh, has very few commercial parts to it. The pulleys are commercial, the uh, gear and the crank are commercial, as is the hook on the end of the line. Everything else, um, you know, I scratch-built combination of wood and styrene. Some of these things that look like metal supports are styrene that I made, like up here holding the pulley. Uh, the base. <laughs> that base, my mother-in-law was a diabetic and she had these needles that came in plastic uh, covered things to protect the needles and uh, I looked at the base of that, cut it off and I used it and it worked out very well. I this thing survived the move. These are the uh, guy wires, which I can reinstall. They'll look fine. I just have to undo this jumble here uh, and, and get that back up. 
What I did uh, back in New Jersey was uh, on the end of that hook, I put a, a man cage to lower people down into the uh, into the pit, I just made out of styrene, and I'll probably put that at the on the end of the hook as well. So those are the pieces, and now what I have to do is decide how to arrange them. A uh, little bit different orientation here than the one that I had back in New Jersey. So um, certainly the company store will end up in the scene. Certainly the freight house will, the office will, and the derrick will. I don't know if I will put the company houses in. We'll see. They could be down the road a little bit. So that's kind of it. Um, I'll show you this again as the scene uh, gets finished. Uh, first I want to figure out how to put the structures around and then I'll come in with the track plan here which is going to be fairly simple. Um, you know, It's going to be a dead end uh, siding, long dead end siding on this shelf here. So that's it. Uh, at the end of this what I'll do is uh, add some pictures from the old layout to show you the scenes and where all of these structures were in there and then eventually you will see how it looks uh, now uh, in, in Michigan. So uh, that's it for this update and uh, short and sweet and uh, we'll be talking again soon. As always if you enjoyed the video please give it a like and if you haven't done so already then please subscribe. Uh, now that I'm working on the layout we should be getting more frequent uh, updates and if you don't want to miss any of them then just subscribe. Okay talk to you again.